Today I've got a nice problem which I found on the 2008 Singapore team selection test for the International Math Olympiad. And what I like about this problem is it involves a sum as well as some tricks from number theory. So let's see what we have here. Our goal is to find all primes p such that p divides the sum as n goes from 1 to 103 of n to the p minus 1. So the fact that we've got a p minus 1 in the exponent really screams that we should use something called Fermat's little theorem. And we'll review Fermat's little theorem, but before we do that, we need to review the notion of congruence mod m. So just like I said, as a review, we say that a is congruent to b modulo m, where m is a natural number, if m divides b minus a. So that's kind of equivalent, or that's exactly equivalent to saying that a and b have the same remainder when divided by m. So let's see. For example, 8 is congruent to 3 mod 5 because when you divide 8 by 5, you get a remainder of 3. And when you divide 3 by 5, you also get a remainder of 3. It's just in that case, your quotient is also just equal to 0, which is not so interesting. Then furthermore, like 17 is congruent to 7 mod 10 for the same sort of reason. Or maybe you could also say 27 is congruent to 22 modulo 5. That's because when you divide 27 by 5, you get a remainder of 2. When you divide 22 by 5, you also get a remainder of 2. Furthermore, they're both congruent to 2 mod 5. Okay, so that's a nice review of congruence modulo m. What about Fermat's little theorem? Well, Fermat's little theorem says that if p does not divide a number a, then a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So, for example, 5 to the 6 power is congruent to 1 mod 7. That's because 7 does not divide 5, so that's pretty clear, and then 6 is equal to 7 minus 1. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'd like to change this problem right here. Instead of saying p divides this thing, we're going to write it in terms of modular arithmetic or congruence mod p. So note, what we really want to find is all p so that the sum as n goes from 1 to 103 of n to the p minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Now next, we're going to split this sum into parts, parts where we can apply for Mas little theorem and parts where we cannot apply for Mas little theorem. So let's do that. So we're going to take this sum. We have the sum as n goes from 1 to 103 of n to the p minus 1 and split it into two pieces. So the sum as n goes from 1 to 103, where p does not divide n, of n to the p minus 1. So that'll be our first portion, plus the sum as n goes from 1 to 103, as p does divide n, of n to the p minus 1. Okay, nice. Now we'd like to look a little bit more carefully at each of these. So what terms are we really summing over here? Well, we're going to sum over all multiples of p. That's what it means for p to divide n. So that means n comes from the following set. It'll be p, 2p, 3p, all the way up to the largest possible power of p, or multiple of p, which is smaller than 103. But we can like encode that pretty easily by saying the floor of 103 divided by p times p. So just to reiterate, that's the largest multiple of p, which is less than 103. Okay, so how many elements are in this set? Well, there are exactly four 
of 103 over P terms in this set or elements in this set. So there's this one right here, P, 2P, 3P, all the way up to that last one right there. But then how many terms are left over here for this portion of the sum? Well, we can just do a quick subtraction problem. We know that there are exactly 103 terms in the sum put together. There are floor of 103 over P terms in that bit. So that means here there are 103 minus the floor of 103 over P total terms in this sum. Great. And now we can apply modular arithmetic or reduce mod p using Fermat's theorem when appropriate. So we don't need to use Fermat's theorem for this last term because if p divides n, then each of these is a multiple of p and this will go to zero mod p. Great. And then by Fermat's theorem, all of this right here will go to one modulo p. Okay, nice. But then how many of those are we adding up? Well, we're adding up exactly 103 minus floor of 103 over P terms, which means that all of this is congruent to 103 minus 103 over P mod P. Great. But remember, we want this to be congruent to zero mod P. So that tells us that what we really need is for 103 to be congruent to the floor of 103 over P mod P. So now we've reduced our problem to determining the primes P satisfying this congruence. Okay, so now let's look into those on the next board. So on the last board, we reduce our goal to the following problem. So we want to find primes P so that 103 is congruent to the floor of 103 over P mod P. Now, since we're dividing by P here inside of this floor, that gives us motivation for doing the division algorithm on 103. So let's do that. So the division algorithm allows us to find integers A and R so that we have 103 equals A, P plus R. Great, and there's actually some sort of limit on the size of R, and that limit is that R is between zero and P minus one. This is just quotient remainder. So we're dividing 103 by P. Our quotient is A and our remainder is R. Of course, you wouldn't want the remainder to be larger than or equal to P. But now from here, we're going to circle this version of 103 back into our setup right here. So that's going to give us a p plus r over here on the left hand side, and then is congruent to a mod p. Great. And so that's because if you divide 103 in this form by p, then your integer part is going to obviously be a. Okay, but now we can reduce this left-hand side mod P and we see that this will go to zero mod P because it's a multiple of P. That tells us that R is congruent to A mod P. But that means that A and R have the same remainder when divided by P, but R is between zero and P minus one. So putting this all together, we can write A as B times P plus R, where B is like our quotient there. Now we're going to look at a couple of cases. So the first case we need to explore is the case when B is equal to zero. But now if B is equal to zero, that means that A is equal to R. So that's stronger than being congruent to R mod P. And then we can circle that back up into this purple boxed equation. And that'll leave us with something like this. A times P minus one equals 103. And so that's just replacing this R with A and then factoring an A out. Okay, nice. 
But next up, we see that 103 is a prime number, so you can check that. So I'll just write here, this thing is prime. So that tells us that one of the terms from this factorization must be 103, and the other one must be one. Well, p plus one is most definitely bigger than one, and that's because p is prime. So that means that a must be equal to one, which means p plus one is equal to 103, which means p is equal to 102. But 102 is not a prime. So that means we don't get a solution in this first case when b is equal to zero. So let's move on to the second case when b is bigger than or equal to one. Okay, so for our second case, we have b is bigger than or equal to one. But we're gonna do pretty much the same thing here. We're gonna take this, which I'll box in pink, and circle it back into this purple boxed equation and see what that leaves us with. So that'll leave us with 103 equals a times p, but we'll write a as bp plus r. So we have bp plus r times p plus r. But notice that that is going to be most definitely bigger than or equal to p squared, because if we were to expand this out, we would have b times p squared plus some other terms but those other terms are non-negative and b is bigger than or equal to one, giving us this inequality. But that tells us that the p is less than or equal to the square root of 103 just by taking the square root of this inequality. So that means our prime p must be less than or equal to the square root of 103, but that only leaves us a couple of primes as possibilities. So those primes would be equal to two, three, five, and seven. So the next prime would be 11, but 11 squared is 121, which is bigger than 103, so that doesn't work. Okay, so now it's the matter of testing each of these one at a time back in to this congruence to see which one works. Okay, so let's do that. Now we're ready to finish this problem off. All that we need to do now is figure out which primes from the list two, three, five, or seven satisfy the following congruence. 103 is congruent to 103 divided by p, the floor of that mod p. So let's just work through these one at a time. So let's look at the case when p is equal to two first. So notice that the floor of 103 over two will be the same thing as the floor of 102 over two, which 102 over two is 51. So that's gonna be equal to 51, but that's congruent to one mod P, or mod two in this case. But 103 is also congruent to one mod two, so it turns out that p equals two is a solution. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one, the p equals three case. So let's see how we might do that. So the floor of 103 over three, so that's gonna be equal to, well, the closest multiple of three, which is downstairs will be 102. So that'll be the floor of 102 over three. Let's see, 102 over three is what? That's gonna be 34. So this is equal to 34. But if we reduce that mod three, what do we get? We're going to get one. So that's congruent to one modulo three. But 102 is congruent to zero mod three, which means 103 is congruent to one mod three. So this is congruent to 103 mod three. So it turns out that this case p equals three also works in addition to p equals two. Okay, so let's check one more and then I'll leave you the last one as a homework. So let's check the case when p is equal to five. Okay, so that'll leave us with the floor of 103 over five. So that's gonna be the same thing as the floor of 100 over five. 100 over five is 20, so that's equal to 20, but 20 is congruent to zero modulo five. 
but 103 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. So that doesn't work in this case. So the case when p is equal to 5 is not a solution to this problem. And like I said, I'll leave the case when p equals 7 as a homework exercise. Maybe post in the comments if the p equals 7 case works or not. And that's a good place to stop.